I'm going to talk about prophecy generally and accuracy of prophets. There are 1,239 Old Testament and 578 New Testament prophecies is what one person calculated. Some calculated a lot more. Um, they're contained in 8,352 verses, so it makes up, if that number is correct, about 27% of the Bible. Um, and this is according to the Encyclopedia of um, Biblical Prophecy. First of all, there's a reason to believe that the, the prophecies were accurate. Most of the prophecies, if not all, were not fulfilled in a prophet's lifetime. So they had nothing to gain by making a prophecy that wouldn't be fulfilled during their lifetime. Another reason to believe the prophets were accurate is that false prophets could suffer death if they made a prophecy that was not accurate, that was not properly prophetic. And the third reason is that biblical prophecies were invariably accurate and we could rely on these prophecies. So, let's talk about probability generally. It's, a po it's possible to calculate the odds that a prophet when made was accurate um, or that it would occur later on. Uh, and there was a man named Peter Stoner who did this. He calculated the probabilities of a prophecy happening um, at the time it was made, happening later. Um, it's also known as odds, and it's a, it's a branch of mathematics that measures the odds of something happening. So, your odds of being struck by lightning in a year, you know, one in 700,000. Being killed by lightning in a year, one in two million. Becoming president, they say one in 10 million. I'm, I think that's a little, <laughs> little too, too much. Of a, mod, a mediator, meteorite hitting your house as one in 180 trillion. Wow. And the prob probability that you're gonna die when you're born is one in one, okay? <laughs> so Peter Stoner, this professor of mathematics and astronomy at, at a college out in uh, California decided he was going to take and measure um, the odds of um, prophecies coming true. And here's what he calculated as the odds of prophecies of Jesus, of, of at least 61 major prophecies of Jesus coming true. He calculated as 1 in 10 to the 165th. That means that it's 10 with 164 zeros behind it. I looked up on the internet. I couldn't find a word for that number. It is so large and so improbable that all of the prophecies about Jesus would come true. They don't even have a word for it. That's wow. pretty accurate. Okay. And then... There was Old Testament prophecy that was fulfilled in Old Testament times, and we'll, we'll talk about those. Um, and Stoner calculates those probabilities. He calculates the odds of 11 Old Testament prophecies um, concerning Samaria, um, Gaza, and, and other areas coming true, being fulfilled in Old Testament, Old Testament times as one in 10 Nova Decillion. I did find that word. And that has uh, about 60 zeros behind the one. Wow. That's a huge number. Wow. That, that, you know, the probability that all of those would, would come true. Wow. And those, those Old Testament prophecies include closing the Eastern Gate, plowing Mount Zion, uh, and Jerusalem becoming a, a heap of rubble, which did happen in Old Testament times, about the enlargement of Jerusalem according to a prescribed pattern, which did happen, about the first prophecy that the Israelites would have their own country, mm. about the prophecies as to the city of Tyre, and about prophecies of the original Jewish diasporas. 
Now the Jews have suffered several exiles in their history. They suffered Old Testament exiles where they were sent to Babylonia, uh, and they were conquered by the Assyrians and that sort of thing. And they've um, also suffered a major dis diaspora um, in New Testament times. This is what, where they went in Old Testament times. Not too far from Jerusalem, they went to neighboring countries where they were exiled to. And here are the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus fulfilled in New Testament times. And these are with Peter Stoner's very conservative odds. Where Jesus will be born. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. 1.8 or 2.8 in 1 million. That John the Baptist will minister before Jesus. And Stoner put 1 in 1,000. I think that's very conservative, one in 1,000. I would put the odds at a lot, lot larger than that. That Jesus will enter Jerusalem as a king riding on a donkey. He put those odds as uh, one in 100. I think those odds are very conservative. But what he does is when he takes these odds, he multiplies them all together to come up with a figure as to the odds of the prophecies in the Old Testament coming true in the New Testament. And so by using these conservative figures, he's, he's got very low odds, and I think the odds of these prophecies occurring are probably much larger. That Jesus will be paired by Judas, a friend, and suffer wounds in his hands. He puts the odds as one in 1,000. I think that's conservative. That Jesus will be betrayed for exactly 30 pieces of silver. He put the odds of that at 1 in 1,000. Now that just blows me away that he was that conservative. First of all, at the time that statement was made in the Old Testament, silver wasn't really the currency in Israel. It was shekels. And I don't know how he could make that statement be only 1 in 1,000. Um, that the betrayal money will be used to purchase a uh, potter's field after a failed uh, attempt to return it. He puts the odds of that at 1 in 100,000. That Jesus will remain silent while he's afflicted. 1 in 10,000. That Jesus will be crucified after having his hand and feet pierced. 1 in 10,000. And when you multiply all of these odds together of Old Testament um, prophecies coming true as to Jesus, he comes up with um, 1 in 10 uh, to the 17th power, or 1 in 100 quadrillion. I think that's light. I think it should be much larger if you, if you use the real uh, odds. But his use of odds, Peter Stoner's use of odds, and I, I talk about that more in the book, has been approved by other mathematicians. And he wanted to be conservative enough to get other mathematicians to approve the odds that he indicated. Um, there are other prophecies about Jesus that came true. That he will perform miracles. We talked about that. That he will be forsaken on the cross despite his anguish. That he will be given gall and vinegar on the cross. Now that is such an unusual prophecy and so specific you wonder how he came up with it, um, but the prophecy came true. That Jesus will be beaten, that his clothes will be divided among the soldiers who guard him on the cross by casting lots. Who would have thought that when that prophecy was made in the Old Testament, that that would happen? That Jesus would die with the wicked and be buried in a rich man's grave. He died with at least one wicked man on the side of him, and he was buried in, in, in the grave provided by um, Nicodemus, they, they, they took him to the grave. Who would have thought that would have happened? Particularly when um, most crucified victims were just put in the ground. Yeah. They weren't taken to a, you know, a high class rich man's grave. Um, that Jesus predicted his death and that he would be resurrected on the third day. And that nations and kings will accept Christ and become Christian. You can understand that one, and it did happen when Constantine accepted um, the Christian religion and gave Christians the same kind of benefits that other religions had in the Roman Empire. Um,
But there were Old Testament prophecies about Israel that were fulfilled in modern times. There's a lot of them. That Jews would be dispersed throughout the world is one of those prophecies. Now, this is a picture of the Jewish diaspora after the temple fell in 70 AD. They were exiled, they were pushed further away than they had been in the prior diasporas. But you'll remember that just before the temple was destroyed, that they crucified Jesus. You also need to remember that because they crucified Jesus, they disowned God more than they probably had disowned Him before. And so that was a pretty significant event, and He dispersed them out into the world. The Old Testament prophets, prophecies say that Jews would return to Israel from the far reaches of the earth. And that's different from the other prophecies where they only went into neighboring lands. That the state of Israel would be reestablished in one day. And that happened. That Israel, despite being considerably smaller, will defeat its larger enemies. And that uh, Israel's once desolate lands would provide in abundance once the Jews returned. So, Israel was established in one day in 1948. Yes, it was. Yeah. You know, that's an absolute um, confirmation yeah. of the prophecy. And it's, it's amazing. And then Israel had many wars against their, their larger neighbors after returning. Their larger neighbors contained sometimes 57 times the amount of population mm. in, by, in coalition than Israel contained. Mm. And yet Israel keeps defeating them. God said that they would. So you, you've got at least these um, wars that they fought, 14 wars. Um, and the coalitions sometimes had 57 times Israel's total population. Now, there was a, a visit that was made to Israel back in the 19th century by um, Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain. And he described Israel as being so desolate that nothing would ever grow there, that no one would ever live in that land. But God prophesied yeah. that the land would be cultivated and that it would be full of vineyards and orchards and animals, and that's exactly what's happened. This is a picture of Israeli farms. This is a picture of some of the Israeli groves, Israeli fish farms. They, they took advantage of the salt water underneath their land, and, and instead of trying to desalinate it, they desalinate water from the Mediterranean, they used that water to put salt water fish farms in Israel, use that as a food source. Israeli sheep farms and an Israeli hothouse. They have come back and they made the land blossom in a way that many people thought couldn't happen and they did it and it had been prophesied by God. So what have we learned uh, in these six sessions? We've learned that biblical authors came up with information not then known where they lived because God knew that it could and would be used later yes. along with modern discoveries as evidence to prove that the Bible is true, accurate, and reliable in all aspects. Amen. We also learned that only God knew or could have known that biblical information not then known where the biblical authors lived uh, or that was subsequently lost to history would be rediscovered to be used as evidence to prove that the Bible is true, accurate, and reliable in all respects. And we also learned that there was information in the Bible which was not then known where biblical authors lived, uh, or information that was lost to history for which there was and would be um, evidence to later answer the scientific and historical skeptics and prove that the Bible is accurate and reliable in all respects. And if the Bible is accurate and reliable in these evidentiary respects, then you know the Bible is accurate and reliable as to who Jesus was, yes. as to the fact that He died on the cross for us, and as to the fact that um, only through belief in Him can we get to heaven. Thank you for your time. Ooh, yeah. Come on. Come on up here. Sir.